Hi, this is Rob Unspot, and I have this, this fabulous book. It's called Successful Weight Loss with the Gastric Sleeve. And, you know, on today's episode here, we're going to actually bring on the author, uh, Dr. Guillermo Alvarez, and some of his patients. And we're going to talk about the gastric sleeve and, and also the book, because I think it's very essential that people understand, you know, the elements of weight loss, how it affects them, and the outcomes. So I'm going to turn this over to Dr. A just to introduce himself, and then we can. Uh, uh, I'll introduce uh, Nina and and Sassy and Tyler, and we can uh, kind of go back and forth uh, answering each other's questions. Thank you, Rob. Uh, welcome everybody, and uh, I want to uh, thank you guys for putting uh, this uh, broadcast together. It's just uh, I think it's a great idea. I think it's very uh, helpful for um, interaction. For uh, people to get to know us, uh, to uh, with the questions and answers, and uh, just to uh, feel make patients feel a little bit more comfortable here. So uh, I want to thank uh, Nina that uh, helps me uh, with a lot of my marketing stuff. Rob, likewise, and my two patients that are online, and uh, I won't uh, uh, mention their names until they introduce themselves. Thank you, Rob. Um, you know what? What was the premise for the book first? You know why? You know there there was a lot of doctors out there that do this, but none of them have a book. Why? Why did you put a book together? Well, the book idea came uh, together back in two thousand and eight or so, Rob, uh, when we published our uh, the first edition of the book. This is the second edition of the book. We added a whole bunch of um, uh, content now, very useful content that we've learned. Since 2010 uh, uh, till today, so uh, the book was uh, the idea was that uh, back in uh, 2005, 2006, when we started doing the, pr the procedure, there was no no information out there at all. Patients were lost. Uh, patients uh, didn't know about uh, what to expect. And by the time it was uh, the procedure was uh, authorized by the FDA, we had uh, quite a bit of experience already. So I said, why not just uh, give it out to patients uh, worldwide and uh, they can uh, have a little bit more uh, information what to expect, some guidelines uh, they can uh, stick to and have a better outcome and take advantage and um, maximize the results with their gastric sleeve, with their procedure. So that was the, the idea of the, of, the, um, of the book. We put it together back, back in 2010 and uh, then we... Um, uh, got more experience, more content, uh, changed some of it uh, as we learned, and uh, now is uh, it's the product of, uh, of the second edition, the book you have now in your hands. How many surgeries have you done uh, with this process? This procedure itself, we've done over 8,000 procedures. Um, it's a procedure that nowadays I've decided to completely, completely just... Um, focus on. I focus only on the gastric sleeve. Uh, why? Because it's a procedure that I truly believe in. It's a procedure that I have no doubts whatsoever. It's the best weight loss procedure out there. And that I learned back in 2006 and I decided to focus on the procedure. But nowadays, we dropped every other procedure out there and we just focus on one procedure. It gives us better outcomes, better results, and, uh, and uh, patients do much, much better. Now, what are some of the concerns? I mean, I, I we we brought Nina and and Tyler and and Sassy on board, so you know, let's let's turn that you know the the questions over to them a little bit because I think that coming to you, patients have a lot of concerns, a lot of questions, uh, and and you spend a great deal of effort to educate these clients or, or patients, you know, but there's always that general fear. Uh, you know, will this surgery work for me? You know, what's the outcome? How many, you know, how many pounds am I going to lose? You know, so if if each one of you guys want to tackle a question, you can. Well, first of all, let me start by saying it's not Sassy, it's Sonia. Rob, Sonia. let me introduce you to Sonia. Well, her, her, her thing came up as, as Sassy, so I apologize. I, that's, that's okay. Um, sassy, I... Some other people have done this, I know, and Sassy is my sleeve name. Mm -hmm. 
So it's the it's the nickname that I came up with for my my sleeve. So that when I do eat more than I'm supposed to and it doesn't agree with me, I blame it on Sassy. Um, <laughs> Sassy's throwing attitude. Sassy doesn't like the no. chicken. Sassy, whatever. So um, it so it and and Sassy and I are becoming closer and closer. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, my name is Sonia, but I'm good with Sassy. It's okay. Now, Tyler, you, uh, you, uh, I, you know, I, I watched your video, Dancing in the Hallway, uh, mm -hmm. the day after you had surgery. And, and what, was, what was the inspiration for that? I mean, you just don't have surgery and say, oh, I'm going to teach dancing or salsa. Well, I before I... Let's see here. I guess the, the whole story really should start when I, after I graduated college, I became a dance instructor. So I taught dance for a little over four years. And when I got married and moved on from that, I, I had a different job. And I started gaining a lot of weight because I wasn't dancing as much anymore. And one of my big things, the reasons why I did this, was because I wanted to go back to dancing, be able to dance again. And... You know, you're down in Mexico, and it's just, you know, salsa. It, it, it's part of the culture. And so I just was inspired to get out and just start moving again and kind of grasp that love of life again. So that was, I, that was why we started dancing. And I'd echo what Tyler said as well. Um... My background is musical theater and performing and singing and dancing and I did shows for years and then I had a child and then I had another child and then I had another child and then and then all of a sudden doing uh, three hour dance rehearsals for a show wasn't as feasible and it was hard and it was tiring and um, and I wanted to go take dance classes, and I couldn't imagine making my way through an entire hour of a ballet class or a jazz class or whatever. And so it was quite serendipitous to, to spend the time there in Mexico with Tyler. And when we were all hanging, we were doing our walk. We were walking down the hall, walk, 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 like we were supposed to do. And I was like, this is getting really boring, really over the walk, 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 walk. And... Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure who uh, spurred us on. Might have been mom, <laughs> but uh, but you know, it was it was like, hey, we have the hallway to ourselves. Let's put on some music and and have some fun with this. So it was it was a great great first day start to to the journey. And I actually um, I had done a show last fall, and but not as a dancer, just as a singer wearing costumes that were larger than I've ever had to wear in my life. And, and that was like a big, okay, that's not going to be me the next show I do. So it was, it was a great, fun thing to start off the journey dancing in the hall. Now, both you and, and Tyler mentioned Mexico. And yes, that's where Dr. Alvarez has his practice. You know, what were the fears going to Mexico? I guess for me, it, it's more of when... I talked to people and I mentioned, hey, I've went and had a procedure done in Mexico. Kind of like that backlash. There's that stigma that some, for some reason is around leaving the U.S. to do anything medical. And that was my biggest fear was telling people that I was willing to take that step and have like what they were going to think of me afterwards. Now, were you guys, um, uh, what was your motivation, though, to get this surgery? I mean, did you hear about it from someone else? Did you read about it? I mean, how did you learn about Dr. Alvarez? I learned uh, about him from Nina. She had told me about him and the procedure and a little bit more about it. And at that point, I was, I had just had a, a a young son, he's now five months old, and I could just feel that I was a lot slower, my back hurt a lot more, and I 
couldn't do what I wanted to do, you know, play with him as much. And so between, you know, hearing about Dr. A and what his, his success rates and just a little bit of background and the pain point that I was in at that moment is really what pushed me over the edge to go ahead and have it done. Now, how long have you, your, was your surgery? How long, how long ago? It was about what, a month and a half now. Six, six weeks yesterday. Yeah. And how do you feel now? I feel amazing. Yeah, I, I'm averaging anywhere from six to seven miles a day walking. You know, just just energy. I've there's a lot of projects that have been lying around the house that haven't gotten done, and I now have the energy and the desire to actually start doing those type of projects and and getting stuff done. It, it's kind of completely changed my mindset. I didn't expect that at all. And, and how much weight have you lost with this procedure? I'm down right around 50 pounds. Wow. Yeah. Now, Dr. A, you, know, yes. you, you have a lot of patients now, and, and your, 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 your name is, is, is getting out there globally. I mean, how do you deal with some of that fame? No, no, it's not fame at all. <laughs> some people just, uh, it's just funny that some people just walk into my office and they see uh, my office and they go, oh, this is a production set and this is where you do all your uh, YouTube videos and the question and answers and sessions and everything. But, um, and some people greet you as a, as a, as a celebrity, but it's uh, uh, feet on the ground. It's just the doctor that uh, uh, helps out people, uh, tries to... Um, uh, get everybody on track. Either it doesn't matter if you're my patient or not. And of course, my patients do get um, a special treatment uh, follow up uh, with a special online system that we have. <clears throat> but the deal is to help out everybody. That's our main goal, uh, and uh, get the get the most out of, of your out of your sleep. But uh, no, no fame, Rob. No fame or nothing spectacular here. Now you, you know, I, I, I. Watched a lot of your videos, and and you know you put a lot of passion into what you're doing, and you welcome people into your uh, into your practice, into your home, and, you know into your life, uh, and and you just try to help everyone. I mean, were you were you always this way, or were you inspired by somebody? Well, um, uh, in the medical field, I, I guess it's it's part of it, but uh, yes, not, not, not all doctors are, are created equal, uh, as, as Sanja said, but uh, I've, I've met a lot of uh, teachers and professors and uh, colleagues, you know, but uh, it's, it's, it's probably just uh, uh, something that, that goes, I believe, goes with weight loss surgery. Uh, once you um, bring on a patient on, uh, on board having weight loss surgery, you form this type of um, link. And it's a uh, it's an uh, ongoing link that will uh, carry on. So why not just embrace it? Why not just make this uh, patient a family member? And and that's what we call our, our group on on Facebook. It's a family group. But everybody uh, puts uh, helps everybody. And uh, once you're on board, you're part of the family. You're part of the endobariatric family. And we'll take care of you all uh, along the way, along the journey. Uh, so uh, family, it's it's not just for a while. When when somebody's family is, it's a lifetime. So we try to to honor that. Now uh, you know your your slogan is is uh, what uh, one sleeve changing lives, one sleeve at a time. Now how did you come up with that? I mean, because I I know it, it does. It's a it's a life changing event. And and um, you know, but how did you get into the the weight loss aspect of it? Out of all the different uh, practices that you could have gotten into. Well, um, I, uh, I bariatric surgery is just overwhelming, overwhelming because the slogan uh, the, 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 we came up with it because it really changes your life in that precise moment and that precise procedure. Those 20, 25 minute procedure. It changes their whole life from there on, and uh, and we uh, or I uh, am very uh, 
particular on crafting those leaves. I love crafting those leaves. are very meticulous. So um, uh, that was one of my colleagues that actually brought up that one sleeve at a time part because once I have that patient in front of me, I'll, I'll just eliminate everything that we have in this world and then just focus on crafting that precise sleeve. So it does change your life and we focus one sleeve at a time. We don't uh, overcrowd our, our facilities with uh, patients wanting sleeves. We focus and we bring on board patients that we do believe will do their best, though that will have their best outcome. And um, and uh, that is why we came up with that with that slowing. Yeah, there's a there's a town in, in the United States that has sleeved a great many people. Uh, can you tell us a, a little bit about that town and and why do you think that uh, you know they're so uh, attracted to uh, endobariatric, especially you, Dr. Alvarez? Yes, um, and that uh, town is uh, is a uh, is Paragol, Arkansas. And uh, it's just a very small town, actually, in Paragol, in, in, in Arkansas. And uh, Paragol has, uh, I believe, about some 25,000, 30,000 uh, people. And it's just word of mouth. It's, uh, it's the old-fashioned way, you know? Uh, now with social media, we do get that same word of mouth. It's just... But uh, back to that town, it, it, it has been just, uh, it has been just uh, word of mouth. Uh, we brought in um, uh, maybe uh, the biggest word that, that uh, started was a patient uh, at Brooksy, and she's uh, she sells real estate. So uh, she moves around in town big time, uh, sells a lot of properties there, and all of a sudden she knows everybody. And all of a sudden, Brooksy started to get uh, nice, slim, and trim, no? And uh, so um, everybody started to notice. And what'd you do? Well, I went to Mexico, you know. And as you were mentioning, the Mexico, what? They're gonna kill you down there? What'd you have done down there? And uh, and of course that uh, that uh, she she actually has uh, has dedicated herself just to explaining how it really is and how uh, how uh, patients get their benefit out of out of this procedure. Uh, Probably we've probably done maybe up to maybe more than 200 patients from that town, wow. so it's uh, it's amazing. And now word has spread out to uh, Jonesburg, Arkansas, Memphis, Tennessee, Little Rock, Arkansas, which is very close by. So uh, we get patients from that area uh, practically every every single week. No. They they elect to come to you because either what their insurance doesn't cover it in the in the states or there's there's something that uh, uh, doesn't conform to U.S. practice or what what's the deal? Here goes. Um, what we try to offer is much better healthcare than in the United States. I did some training in the United States. I was in Dallas for a, for a, for a while, and um, uh, the system. The system, the healthcare system. Well, you know about this. The system, the healthcare system in the United States is it's bad. So um, they'll make you jump through the hoops. Uh, they'll make you uh, just waste time, waste money to get something you really want. So uh, something that you really need. So we try to offer convenience, um, much better healthcare than in the United States. At uh, at least half the price that you would pay in the United States, so that is why um, we exist. That is why our, our uh, we have this business. Um, everybody, uh, it, it's always a business, yes, but it's once you put in that passion and you set the business part, it's just it's it's all joy. It's all it's all it's all happiness. So um, once you start to uh, to uh, what you, when you love something that you do, it's just not work. So uh, that's what we focus on. That's what we put all our passion into, and uh, that's how we've grown our practice. That's awesome. Hey, let me switch gears a little bit, and I'll I'll, I'll go to, to to Nina or or Sonia or Tyler. You know, coming from the United States into Mexico, you know, how is the process? I mean, you got to go through uh, you know gates and customs and all this other uh, rigmarole. I mean, how was that? I mean, you guys want to fill me in on the details? 
maybe I can answer that question and also piggyback a bit on what Dr. A was saying just about uh, cost and why choose going to there as opposed to having it at home. Because I'm actually in Canada. And so I went from Canada to the U.S. to Mexico to, to do the, the surgery. And, and I had had, um, I started my research on this a couple of years ago. And when I first started, I had been looking at the lap band because it was one that you could do self-pay in Canada. There was a clinic, and I looked at that and researched that. And I had a friend who had a lap band done in the States, and then one of her friends that had a sleeve done in Mexico. And I talked to my one girlfriend, and I was like, she's like, oh, you will, you will not regret it. You will be thrilled. She said, but get the sleeve. And at that point, I had never heard of the sleeve. I had no idea what she was talking about, and I started researching the, the VSG or the sleeve surgery instead. And and I read reviews for countless people. I was on Facebook groups. I read accounts of surgeries all throughout the U.S. Um, through different doctors in Mexico. Really did a lot of homework. And, um, and since then, I've become a part of a very select small group of Facebook friends that we all had our surgery done within a couple of weeks of each other. And um, one of them actually did go, actually two of them also went to Dr. A about a week or so after me. And, um, but one is from New Brunswick, another province here in Canada. I'm in Ontario. She's in New Brunswick. She waited seven years to get her surgery done in province in Canada. Her process to get to her actual surgery was seven years long. In Ontario, my process I had been told could be anywhere from a year to two years minimum and then I could still possibly get denied because at this point in my life I didn't have any comorbidities. But my father passed away a year and a half ago of complications of type 2 diabetes. I wasn't willing to wait 10 or 15 years to have comorbidities and then try to reverse a process. I wanted to try to reverse the process before it was causing those external problems. And so I was looking at Mexico because I wasn't willing to wait here. In addition, Ontario doesn't do the sleeve surgery unless you really, really, really push. They do bypass. And I didn't want a surgeon who was doing a surgery that they didn't really want to do, that they only do every once in a while. I wanted a surgeon who makes it their life and does it and does it because they want to do the very best. And that's what I got. Oh, so Mexico. You, Sorry, Rob, your question. Crossing into Mexico was not a problem. It was easy. Rosie is a gem. She is fabulous. Um, we had all sorts of fun. We, Tyler and Nina and the other couple that was with us, um, just really a great visit going down. And we all had passports. I mean, people travel to Mexico all the time. I don't get the whole scared of Mexico, but the night before we went down, went out to grab dinner, and happened to meet somebody who was staying there at the hotel and he does a lot of business on both sides of the border and he looked at me and was like oh my gosh you're doing what are you kidding that's crazy here let me give you my business card I know people down there so if you get into any problems or any trouble you you call me and I'll have somebody I'm like really like it, it it's just the perception of of I guess what could happen but that could happen in Detroit that could happen in New York that could it, it that whatever that is is not exclusive to being in another country and um, I, I think it's it's a well-run operation if you will Rosie is amazing and never felt a moment of uh, hesitation or worry or stress in going over the border or in the return Fantastic. <clears throat> now, let's, you know, you, you had touched on your dad having uh, type 2 diabetes. Now, how does some of these diseases, uh, how are they affected when you start losing weight? Uh, I'll go to uh, Dr. Alvarez to, to talk about that. Yeah. Um, comorbidities, uh, uh, medical conditions like high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, cholesterol, triglycerides, all get much, much better or get eliminated after weight loss surgery. Um, those conditions or the metabolic aspect of the surgery um, is well known and uh, patients who have prediabetes or have diabetes 
they um, they practically go in, uh, uh, in, into remission. It's like a cancer, you know. It's uh, you had cancer, you don't have it anymore. You go into a remission, and uh, all you have to do is just follow up, and make sure it doesn't come back. But the weight loss uh, helps a lot uh, to uh, to reduce all these comorbidities. There is a direct relationship with it. But uh, we do get a lot of patients. There's a lot of patients that come down and say, or a lot of my patients that come into my office and say, well, and can I really have this surgery because I'm diabetic, or is it too risky? Actually, that is an indication for weight loss surgery. That is even a better indication because you'll get the most outcome, the better, the most benefit out of this procedure. So uh, these uh, these comorbidities or this condi these conditions do get much better, get eliminated completely after having this procedure. Now, <clears throat> oh, I lost my train of thought, and I apologize, but. Let's go back. Now, you were trained in the uh, United States and also in France. Um, you know, why France? Well, France is, uh, is a, is a uh, pioneer country in, in this type of procedures. And uh, um, there was this, uh, this procedure that was coming out, and I said, well, I have to go and learn it from... Uh, from the base, from where it, it, it all started, you know. So uh, um, that was back in maybe 2004, and uh, and uh, it's uh, it's something that we. Uh, when I came back from France, there was no information about the sleeve. I mean, nobody wanted the sleeve whatsoever. Nobody was interested in having the sleeve because there was no nothing. I mean, you would type in, Google it, and just very small things would come out. And nowadays, it's it's just a big boom. But uh, we started doing the procedure. Nobody wanted the procedure unless you had a previous surgery or failed surgery, like lap band and a failed lap band. Those patients would uh, they would jump in uh, without a problem, that because they had no known what the, uh, losing weight was, how they felt, and then either the band slipped or had an issue, and then they took the band out. Here comes the weight back on. So those patients were really into just losing weight at any outcome. So we had an offered the sleeve, and uh, and then we noticed that the procedure was so good then that we said well, we should just go directly and uh, to a sleeve without offering any bands or anything to the patients, and those patients would do phenomenal. So um, that was the, the the story why why France why. Um, the, the European Institute of Telesurgery, where I did the training. Now, do you have a, a patient that that's you know we have a TV show here called The Biggest Loser. Do you have, do you have a client that has lost the most weight? Yes, um, we actually have patients from The Biggest Loser. I'm not going to say any names. <laughs> they go jump into the show. Uh, they go in. They're uh, eight weeks on the show with. Uh, nutritionists and uh, dietitians and busting their butt offs for eight hours a day and uh, for those eight weeks they do lose the weight but uh, and after after the show's over uh, well guess what the, the weight comes back on why because you're you're back to your own uh, habitat you're back to your own routine your uh, your, your lifestyle so uh, I had one patient that uh, she lost 75 pounds on the show it was huge I mean she did really good and I told her well, uh, why not just, I mean, you had a big big start right there, just maintain it. She goes, it's just unreal, Dr. A. It's unreal because I've got my family to attend. I've got my life, my work, everything, and I just can't be eight hours a day uh, just uh, working out and focusing on this. So she regained it all back. We uh, uh, did her sleeve, and she lost even more than those 75 pounds and just kept it all out. And then she sent me the... The second runner-up of another season uh, of the Biggest Loser and did uh, his surgery as well. So um, it's something that uh, that uh, it's proven that uh, that uh, diet and exercise isn't for everybody. Um, but for those patients that it isn't for everybody, uh, we have this this alternative. Can, now, I, can I comment on that, Rob? Sorry. Okay. No, One um, I love The Biggest Loser. I love watching the show. I I like watching it for how to get certain exercises, nutrition. All of that is, is good because it's important still to understand the nutrition and what you're eating. 
But one of the things that really hit me just before the surgery is I had dinner out with um, my in-laws. My in-laws are all thin. They're all they're all thin. We're at a nice restaurant, and they're leaving quarter or half to amount on their plate. They're done. They've, they've eaten what they can eat, and they're done. Dessert gets offered. No, thank you. We're good. And I'm sitting there like, really? I want dessert. I can finish my food. Why can't we get appetizers? It, and so people ask me, I said, it's not about limiting myself for the rest of my life. It's not about like not ever having anything, but I want to eat like a thin person. That like it's it's changing that whole sort of thing and, and sort of being forced into it. Being eating like a thin person instead of eating like what I have been eating like for, for however many years. And 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 not having that be such a an eight hour a day struggle, a having to be at the gym all day, oh my gosh, I had four hundred extra calories of this, I have to get on the treadmill for an hour to to balance it. And and having that kind of constant struggle um, I, I had worked with the trainers. I had gone to the gym. I had, you know, done all of that for years. And even in university, 20 some years ago, I was a dance major and lived in a third floor apartment and lived five blocks from the campus and ate nothing but saltine crackers and oodles and noodles every day and tuna fish salad and still couldn't lose weight and was still one of the heaviest in the the program. And so. There was something else going on there, and that has is now not a problem. And it's ama it's it's so amazing that I can go and eat and be like, eh, that's I'm good, I'm full, no problem. So it's it's changing the mentality of not limiting or or eliminating what we've always done, but instead, I want to be a thin, healthy person. I want to think like a thin, healthy person. I want to eat like a thin, healthy person. And and this gives us that tool to be able to do that. So is there foods that you can't eat anymore, or you just said, you know, I, I'm not touching that stuff? Well, I'm only six weeks out. So, yes, there's definitely foods that I still can't eat. Um, but uh, have I have I led the, the perfect post-op uh, life of food and drink? No, I have not. Um, but I, I haven't touched bread. I haven't touched potatoes. I haven't touched like any of the major starches. I haven't done. But I spent my birthday weekend in New York City. Did I have a cocktail? Yes, I did. Um, but I had one that did not have any bubbles in it. I had one that only had a splash of juice in it. I made sure and had additional water to make sure that I was hydrated to balance for the effect of it. And I didn't have it until I had had my protein for the day. So it, so did I take that little stuff into an area that, you know, like, no, it, it isn't about no, never. And, and I don't really abide by the, oh, you can have a little bit of this. No, it's, it's a drug. The sugar is a drug. That it's it's all they're all drugs, and you can definitely get addicted to them in a different way. And a little bit is like <laughs> they say you can't have one drink because you'll have a dozen if you're an alcoholic. I think food's the same way. And so yeah, there's a lot of things that I have eliminated right now. What the future may hold, I don't know, but I appreciate that I can't have them right now, and that I am. Um, not feeling the need for them or missing them either. Now, how was your surgery? I mean, was there any pain involved? What? How, how did you? How did the, the the care? I mean, the care is amazing. Um, I did not have any pain, but I will say one of the um, the other aspects we were talking about comorbidities, which I did not have, but I had uh, suffered with a chronic cough for over two years. I had canceled singing engagements because I would lose my voice. I stopped taking singing engagements, everything because of this cough that I had. And I actually showed up the morning of surgery asking, can I take this narcotic cough medicine because I was so afraid of waking up from surgery coughing so bad and having it be painful because of the core muscles and, and coughing and having had gastric surgery. And um, so I went in the days prior to in the morning of surgery just still literally taking this narcotic cough medicine so I wouldn't cough. I have not had to take it since. 
I have not coughed since. I have not had any problems since. I am singing my voice back to 100% fabulous because Dr. A found when he went in that I had a uh, five centimeter hiatal hernia that he then repaired. I had had tons of tests in the last two years for it. They had given me meds for it. They had given me all sorts of things. They had never found the hernia. And I have since gone back to my doctor here and said, here's my surgeon's report. Here's what happened. Here's what they did. And his response was basically, oh, well, good that he fixed it. We probably would have just given you some more meds. <laughs> Not necessarily fixed it. We would have just given you more reflux meds, more antacids, something like that instead. So, um, so not only did I get this sleeve surgery that, yes, has changed my life, but there was this huge silver lining from it um, as well in the surgery and no pain. That's pain. awesome. You know, uh, at Nina, you've been quiet, and I, and I don't want to pick on you, um, but um, I'm going to. Um, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, you're doing a, a wonderful job, you know, with, with helping Dr. A with his, his marketing and his, his advertising. Is there anything that you can elaborate on, you know, what he does to help others? Well, first, I probably should tell you that I'm one of his patients also. Um, I, I'm Tyler's mother, and um, I was sleeved in February of 2014. And so I know firsthand exactly what happens and how he does it. I, I walked into his office, and he says, what is it you do? And I said, I, I have a marketing company, and, and the rest is history. Um, yeah, he, um, you know, the, when I went down there with Tyler and I met Sonia, um, I noticed little things that he did differently or that was done a little differently than when I was down there. For instance, um, they have an oxygen mask on their face after they come out of surgery. It's a normal thing. But I noticed it was on longer than when I was on there. Uh, another thing is normal is you have a wrap around your, your legs for, I think it's blood clots, probably, Dr. Alvarez, right? That's correct. Okay. I noticed they left them on longer than they did for me, and so I asked him, why was that? And he said, Nina, I'm always fine-tuning. I'm always thinking. He even told me how he stitches the stomach up. He does it different than he used to do. And how he does it, and it's magical to me, but how he does it, uh, there's very, very little um, nausea. Um, the pain, I mean, to watch these, these two dance, and, and then their sleeve sister also, dance salsa in the hospital um, in hallway 24 hours after a major surgery, no way. You know, I mean, it's it's that, and, and he's and he's um, he's the kindest doctor that we we've, we've ever met. But he just he really has perfected that craft. I think that's you know the message that people ought to get, Rob. So, how are you guys living your lives now after your sleep? I mean, how's it different? I'm living my life like I did two or three years ago, I would say. It, it's not so much that it's different from forever, but it's, it's different from recent. It's, it's energy. It's, I haven't had any headaches. Like they talk about you can't have NSAs and, and Advil and stuff like that. I would pop Advil like candy. I, I had headaches all the time. I have not had a single headache since the surgery. Um, kind of bizarre to me side effect of like side benefit. I don't know what I was getting them from before that I don't have them now. But um, I really say I'm like, I haven't needed to have the Advil. I haven't needed to take anything because I haven't had any headaches. I haven't had any pains. Um, I don't I don't wake up in the morning and step out of bed and like my feet touch the, like I used to put my feet down and feel pain go through like little shots, like just sort of the blood moving or something. I, just as I say that, I realize I haven't had that. So how has life changed? I still have three young kids. I still go to hockey practice. I still run them around. I still do pickups and drop-offs and take my husband places and, you know, still do everything that I did before. But now I do it all more easily. 
I do it all in um, clothes in my closet that I haven't worn in several years that I get to pull out. Um, I I do it all. I do it all wearing my Fitbit, so I know how many how much I'm walking. Um, so it's not so much that it's my life is different than it was before. It's just better than it was before. How about you, Tyler? I would say for me, the biggest change has been more of a mindset. And I mean, yeah, I've lost a lot of weight. I feel a lot more energy. But for me, it's more. I want to do things more often. I was getting to a point where I didn't want to go out because I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't want to do certain things. But now, now that I can, I have more energy, but I'm getting back into old clothes and just the desire is coming back. And it just it blows me away of, because you don't know really how much changed until you kind of look back and you you realize, oh man, I was a completely different person three years ago and I just kind of became a hermit and didn't do all this type of stuff and now getting back out there and it's seeing people again and that's been the biggest change and the desire to continue that change. I had been, before uh, we had our, our son, we went, we went on a cruise and I remember thinking, man, I want to lose a lot of this weight. So my wife and I, just, we, we joined a gym. We went we worked out for oh, probably about a year and a half. And I gained, or I lost all of like three pounds in a year and a half of going to the gym. And I said, oh, it's because you're gaining all this muscle and all this stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I, okay, all right, whatever. But... The big thing was I didn't change anything else about my life. I would go to the gym for you know two or three times a week, but but now going through this whole process has really kind of changed my mindset and in, in what I do and the reasons why I do it. You know the way I eat is completely different now, and it's not it's not just because I can't eat as much. Is because now there's that desire to continue this change and. To move forward, so there's been some sort of switch that's flipped, and I guess is the best way of, of saying it. Yes, I'll, I'll just add something extra there because it's something very important. Um, once we started doing this procedure, we thought that this procedure would only only work as a um, restrictive procedure. That that would mean just limiting the amount of calories you would uh, intake. So uh, if you look at it at a simple way here, like a bank account, you have some money in, uh, you spend more, and, and uh, you'll lose weight. And this way, you'll lose the money from the bank account. But nowadays, we know that there's much more to that, as Tyler is saying. There is a lot of interaction, hormones going, signals between the stomach or the sleeve that's left behind, the pancreas, cravings change, your insulin is better, the resistance to insulin, um, uh, your interaction with glucose or sugar levels is better, your labs are better, everything is better, your, your, your kidneys function better, your liver functions better, and this is what we know to, to, to today. There's a lot of stuff we don't understand yet and there's a lot of ongoing studies right now. But we now, we now know that it's not a bank account, it's money coming in, money coming out, when in other words, calories coming in, calories burning. This is more a uh, chemical lab. So it, it, this procedure itself changes, and it, it changes the chemical lab in your body for, for the good. And it changes your, your taste buds. It changes your cravings. It changes many other things that help your body all, all around. I'll go back to... Um, um, uh, Rob's question that I, I, I'm sorry I took off with The Biggest Loser a, a few minutes ago. But um, as Tyler was saying, I mean, you can bust your butt off at the gym. It's sometimes, sometimes it won't work. But uh, uh, we are, are pro probably my, my, uh, my biggest loser patient, uh, probably uh, 270 pounds lost. So um, that's lost. So you can imagine he was a big boy. And uh, nowadays, you see him, and it's like um, you never think he was that big 
from the get-go. No, we're slowly running out of time, and, and I appreciate you know you guys being on this uh, Google Hangout. Now, do you guys have any last words of advice for anybody considering this procedure? It's not as scary as you think it's going to be. <laughs> Piece of cake, huh? Piece of cake. You know, I think I could say that you know, in the end, my husband couldn't go with me, and so I ended up going alone. So not only was I going to Mexico, but I was doing it by myself. And it was like not a problem at all. Rosie that um, Sonia talked about, Rosie is the driver that picks us up in San Antonio, uh, drives us a couple hours to a, a town called Eagle Pass, which is just over the border from where Dr. Alvarez's hospital is. So it's a very simple, easy, well orchestrated. Um, you're in the hospital. Oh, well, I think one of the things we love so much when we're there, and I'm sure Tyler and Sonia, you you got a kick out of this. The nurses there wear the little hats they used to hear in the United States back in the 1930s and 1940s. They look so nice, and they're so kind and so gentle. Um, I got a kick out of Tyler was was trying to speak Spanish to them, and they loved that. So. It's a really, really friendly, well-orchestrated um, place and location. It's safe, small little border town. So um, I think that's probably the message I would have. Yeah, yeah I would just say the go, same thing. Yeah, go ahead, Tyler. I'm sorry. I just all the fears that you have of leaving the country and going over, and yeah, and then. To my point I was mentioning earlier, when I've now talked to people about it here, I didn't get the same reaction I was expecting. I got a lot of approval, and they're just saying, hey, more power to you. That's amazing that you're able to take that step, and once they start seeing the change, and there hasn't been really any negative back, uh, feedback that I've received. Uh, Dr. A, Dr. Alvarez, uh, for those who uh, are new to this procedure or haven't uh, learned about you, how do they how do they discover more about uh, what you do? Um, endobariatric is a word. <laughs> endobariatric is our website, and uh, all social media channels uh, lead you to 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 me uh, with the word endobariatric. So. Um, I, uh, I'm very active on social media. I'm, I'm there on Facebook. I personally reply. I personally reply to, um, to everybody on the group we have on Facebook. I, um, I see all the comments on my YouTube channel, uh, which is youtube.com slash endobariatric. I personally tweet. I personally reply. So uh, it's practically very simple to, uh, to get a hold of me. Now, you have... Uh what, over 2 million views on your YouTube channel. That's yes. That's impressive. Yes, uh, we've got over, uh, I believe, uh, six, 7,000 subscribers and over 2 million views on our YouTube channel. And uh, more to come because uh, we are uh, very engaged with our, our YouTube community and bringing, bringing them more, more information, more content. Now, what's what's to come to? Uh, what's more to come from from Doctor? What what can we expect from you? I mean, more social media, more YouTube videos, you know, more uh, educational procedures. I mean, everything. More yes, more uh, more educational stuff, uh, more uh, books, uh, years to come, and uh, uh, um, the more information I give to you, the the patients, uh, I totally believe it's more power. So it's more outcome, better results. So that's that's what I what I'm here for, and that's what I'm going to do. Well, I thank you all, and uh, you know I, I want you to all have a wonderful day. And if you're you know listening and and you want to get Dr. Alvarez's book, it's called Successful Weight Loss with the Gastric Sleeve.